Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. So here we are in March and we will be taking a look at the threes in the minor arcana of the tarot. So let's start out with the wands. And this is from the Anike and this is a very classic image. You often see that you're, you're viewing someone from the back and they're looking out ahead and holding the wands. So when we're dealing with three energy, you know, we're really dealing a lot with creative energy and also energy that can be cause for worry. And you'll see that play out through the different suits. Uh, this is the standard Rider weight. Once again, seeing the person from behind. And in the dreaming way, we have just a little more here. Uh, we have the rainbow there. So it's showing not only are we waiting but that something good perhaps is on the way. Um, I do like how Chira Marchetti um, showed this in his, uh, this is the Tarot of Dreams. So here you'll see the, uh, the man, a man here. He's unclothed. He's got the three wands and he is in repose. He's waiting. Now, I think the fact that he is not wearing clothes, you know, kind of shows the, um, like the presence of his own innocence and his Everything that's, that he did was really of himself, and he really has no attachments to what will be coming next. Um, perhaps because of the color in the card, there's a lot of red and there's passion in hopes. Of course, it's a fire suit. And, but what I really like here is that you see the ship here, which we've seen in some of the other cards. Um, and a lot of times it said, okay, your ship is coming in. But with this card, it's really not clear. Has he just created something and is he sending that ship out? Or has he maybe created this quite a while ago and is the ship now coming in? So I like the, the ambiguous quality of that. Because I think when it comes to creating, it really can go either way. It's going to depend on where you're at in the process. And here it shows... Um, Sun in Aries up top. There are the so I like that take on that card. Um, I did want to include the Vision Quest tarot this time because there are a couple people that have written to me telling me that they just got that deck and they're enjoying working with it. Um, uh, Marada and also uh, Monique from the Netherlands. So I hope you both are really enjoying the deck. So in this deck, now. This deck runs a little closer to the Thoth deck. So we do have a keyword here and it says integrity. So you'll see the three wands bundled and you know, being able to stand more securely than when we just had the two wands. And the, in this deck, the integrity that they're speaking of really has to do with, your, uh, with the heart and um, knowing who you are and you, that is really seems to be the sense of the creativity that they are speaking about or the fire that they are speaking about in this deck. Knowing your heart and what you are uh, producing from that and to make sure that it is in, integral in both senses of the word and pure as well. So in the Thoth deck, um, it's similar and the word is virtue. And it's a little more about um, working together perhaps trusting others, trusting yourself and trusting others through the creative process. And I think it's interesting also because, you know, the saying that uh, patience is a virtue and that is part of this process, patience with yourself and just with what's coming and going and, and cycling around. So uh, here is, um, this is the alchemical tarot. And you know, to me, that's more of the ship coming in, but it, I guess it can go either way. But it's very, um, it's beautiful. This has a nice balance of peace and subtlety and the fire element. So again, that idea of bringing in or consulting with others and bringing in different elements to, to make that creation. And let's see where we are here. Okay, this is the um, Prisma Visions Tarot. Now, some of these images are a little hard to see. I'll put it close as I can here. So it's a man um, creating a fire here. And I think that's really a wonderful metaphor. So you'll see there's, there looks like three branches here. And he's adding 
he's adding tinder and, and things to help that fire along. So in that creative process, you know, the, the uh, passion and fire that it takes to create something is also the same uh, fire that's needed to keep it going and not to overdo the flames, but just to slowly and steadily tend to the fire and tend to the project that you have at hand. And I have a few more. Oh, I did want to uh, show the um, Ludi Lescott. Now this has a slightly different take. So in this deck, she is appears to be in an attic and she's just looking through some old things, um, perhaps someone else's old items. And the idea here is that before you enter into that creative process, you're going to look and see maybe what others have done before you and how they uh, went through that process. So I don't know if I love that interpretation, but I think it's a very valid interpretation. I, I mean, I think it's a very useful addition to everything that has we've talked about so far. Um, Okay, I like this as well. This is from the, um, this is the Ellis deck, Ellis Tarot deck, and it's a little hard to see, but there's a man here, and he, you see the three wands. We're looking at the man from behind, and it looks to me that this bear here is coming out of hibernation, so that's a clever way, rather than using the ship as a metaphor, so it's, you know, the bear is now uh, or the project is now coming through. It's coming, like I said, the bear out of hibernation. So I think that's very cool. And in the Dream Enchantress tarot, this gives more of the idea of working together. And you just see two people here working together to, to do what needs to be done. So again, it brings in the idea of trust. And that is another element of the of the three is, you know, keep in mind that it is working, working together. And you'll see that in all of the threes, um, pretty much. Uh, I guess we should end up here with the um, Deviant Moon. So the creative process, it's interesting, it's coming right from this from the belly here. Um, and now these flowers or, or whatever they are representing wands are have not fully bloomed yet and that the moon here is blowing some of her energy onto them so again it's sort of the idea of calling in different elements and working together okay so let's take a look at the pentacles and uh, once again here is Anna Kay and this is very typical where you see the person uh, working and in this case putting that last piece needed here to complete this project. Okay, um, in, this is uh, also the Tower of Dreams. Person is working hard, um, obviously very skilled at what he's doing and it shows here what is that the Mars is in Capricorn. So there's a passion to the work the work is very grounded and stable. And you'll see that idea in a lot of the upcoming cards here. This is from the Alchemical Tarot. The artist is, in this case, doing a, a drawing. It could be a self-portrait. And it, it has a sense of stability and grounding, but it also has a peaceful quality as well. You know, so, so you're really absorbed in that work. Uh, again, here is the Prism of Visions, where you see the, the mason laying brick. Very interesting. If you can see, his eyes are closed, and that just gives the idea that he's done this so many times that he knows exactly what he's doing. He's very grounded and stable in what he's doing. And this symbol here, which is, is shows up a lot in these cards, it, likely a Masonic symbol here, but we have the three pentacles and an arch. Uh, we know the arches and the um, the pointed and the domed arches are very, you know, very much in the Masonic uh, temples and stuff like that. And I just like to mention that because, you know, these cards are so based on that. Okay. Um, but I, I, that shows the balance of three pentacles and, again, bringing in different elements. But he's just peacefully and strong, strongly working, um, working away. Um, okay, this is really neat in the uh, Ludi Lescott. So you'll see the artist here 
he's creating um, a painting here. You see he's got his palette and he's painting and if you look closely at the people that he's painting or the image that he's painting, you'll recognize that as a classic image uh, from Rider Waite. So take a good look at those people and then you'll see here is the Rider Waite um, and they're wearing, you know, similar type of gear. So that's a nice nod to the old deck. Um, let's see here. Okay. Oh, this was. This is also the um, um, Dream Enchantress, and and it's very cute. Um, there's someone tending to this woman, giving her a tattoo. So it's really very creative showing uh, a different skill set than the, uh, or the other artists or masonry. Now this is the uh, Dreaming Way and this is so different than the others. So here we have a woman looking a little flustered, a little frustrated that the coins that had been balanced on top of her head are now falling. So you know really giving the idea that something is off balance and you can't always keep things um, as stable as you as one wants so that is an incredibly different take on the card and really uh, you know is going to change the reading uh, when that comes up if you use that deck okay in the um, vision quest um, the very nice uh, the word here is simply growth and you'll see the seeds are now in various stages of, of growth there budding and flowering yet to flower so that's, I think that's such a, a really good take because you really get the sense of the earth element there. And in the Thoth deck, it says works. And you can just imagine these wheels kind of spinning and everything is um, really just coming together in a very energetic way. Um, and here is the uh, Deviant Moon, and you'll see there are three people each working, kind of performing their skill on, on each other, one another there. The Pentacles, here we have the Downward, and they're all in ver these are various stages, sort of heading downward, you know, denoting the Earth energy. And there's that symbol I spoke of earlier um, with the arches. Okay. So let's move on. I think we should do the swords. Okay, uh, I'm sure many of us know how difficult it is when this card comes up. So here is the Anake, and you really get a sense of the emotional state here. It's just so beautifully done. Um, both the, the woman here in the front and the man are both very forlorn, very upset. See that rose on the ground there? And even though she's carrying the swords, both of them are very unhappy. You know, so uh, this is the classic Rider Waite. Really says a lot with that very gray background. Swords through the heart. Um, in the um, Tower of Dreams, you'll see, oops, see the woman here, well, she's crying. Um, but you'll see she's also sort of protecting her heart. She's got her hands over her heart. So, you know, really giving the idea of, of deep grief, hurt, betrayal, or worry brought about by someone else or by herself. It's unclear. Um, and that is Saturn in Libra. Okay. And this is the alchemical tarot. Great depiction. The crying eye, watering the rose. So the hope of better things to come. And here is the um, Prisma Visions. Interesting. So here we have uh, we have a stag that's been killed. Three swords. Stag is a very powerful, very swift animal, and yet has been taken down. Um, you know, showing that this is the type of thing that can happen to any of us at any time when we have that situation where something is completely, uh, maybe by surprise, um, very painful or 
um, a, an attack or a betrayal, you know, which is often seen when this card shows up, of course. And this is the um, uh, Dream Enchant Enchantress. So looking very stern and upset there. Deep grief. Okay, in the uh, vision quest, um, it says doubt. So they're really taking a slightly different t uh, turn on this one, and it's self-doubt. I think they did, again, a really wonderful job depicting this card with the air energy. So self-doubt. So, you know, like I was saying a minute ago, it's not always about uh, betrayal that someone has uh, done to you, but it can be your own worrying. These threes really have to do uh, often with worry. Um, creativity and worry. So this is that, you know, it's time when it shows up in this de deck, it's time to look at what you're doing to yourself. How are you just um, over analyzing or overthinking something or thinking the worst of something? So very good there. And in the Thoth deck, it says sorrow, you know, really giving into the idea of grief. And the Ludi Lescott. Now, I had talked about this particular card when I did a review of the deck because I, it is such a strong, um, almost overly so, image of the Three of Swords where, as I had said in that other video, um, she, you know, she had just witnessed these, it appears that their children, the babies have been killed, perhaps in a ritual, ritualistic manner. And the... Um, you know, the, the pain and grief of seeing that has just likely changed her life forever. Because, you know, when you see something so egregious and so horrible, it really does have an effect and um, it takes a long time to process and work through that. And, of course, the death here. It's just such a strong, strong um, image that I, I have to wonder that the artist... Um, knew something about this type of the you know this type of ritual or programs to produce this type of card. This is another Chira Marchetti deck and it it's it's simple but it kind of really says a lot with that up close image. So the deviant moon right through the heart. And you know interesting that um, sometimes when people are grieving deeply there really is a sensation of of a knife through the heart and you can see that in very very old um, um, like homeopathic texts going back you know a hundred or more years when that's actually a, a physical it's like a sensation that people have that it's like oh it's like truly feels like there's a knife in the heart and there um, of course there are remedies for that so let us take a look at the cups and very, you know, much more positive here. And see, this is the Anna Kay. You see people, these three uh, ladies enjoying them, each other, enjoying themselves, enjoying the fruits of the earth there. Really in balance and in harmony with each other. And that is the main theme through this card here. And that's the classic Rider Waite. and uh, alchemical, using different colors here, and different symbols as well. We have fire, air, and earth on, on the ladies' heads there. Okay. Dream Enchantress, they're just enjoying, they're playing out and dancing in the uh, forest. Very joyful, happy, and in the um, vision quest, it says uh, fullness. Again, I really like the depiction here. All the water flowing, plenty for both of those people and plenty for the basin here. And again, showing fruit and um, greenery from the earth. And in the Thoth, it says abundance. You can really feel the meaning of that card, all the flowing nature of that card. 
Um, now, Ludi Lescott, I mean, I guess this is kind of as good as it gets um, because it is, you know, a more subtle, more dark deck. But uh, you see she her companion here is a, a bird and she's sharing the grapes with her bird friend. It's on the checkerboard floor there rather than out in the forest. Um, the Prisma Visions. Three ladies dancing in unison, really giving the idea of working together again or, you know, in an, in an emotional sense. So there it gives the idea of maybe of empathy or compassion and understanding another as you understand yourself as well. Such a great depiction of that. Uh, this is the um, Deviant Moon. Okay. Yeah. So they are having a good time, even though they are in the mouth of a giant fish there. Still bonding with each other. And uh, this is the, um, this is also from the Ellis deck. Very similar to the others. Where people are in harmony and working together. Bringing, it brought in a lot of the blues for that water element. So uh, I guess that's about it for the threes. And I do hope you have a wonderful March. It's really exciting that spring is coming. Um, so I will see you next month for the fours. And until then, stay well. Bye now.